So uh, let's decide with these first two pairs whether they are corresponding angles or whether they are alternate interior angles. Okay, that first one, those are corresponding. Okay, if you notice, they are in the same position relative to the transversal. Okay, that's the transversal right there that cuts through those parallel lines. If you haven't heard that term before, I will be using it frequently. The transversal is the line that cuts through the parallel lines. Um, you will notice that uh, corresponding angles, the parallel line is the bottom of the angle and the transversal is the right side of the angle. So that's why those are corresponding angles. Uh, now for the more visual people, this is how I think about it. Um, if I were to take this parallel line and slide it down my transversal, <clears throat> excuse me, where would Y be in relationship to X? Well, if you slide that down, Y is going to be on top of X. That's the way that I look at it. Okay, number two, those are alternate interior. Keyword being alternate. Well, both of them are keywords, but first of all, alternate. They are on opposite sides of the transversal. Interior, they are inside the parallel lines. Okay, um, so we also have um, additional, there's another pair of alternate interior. Uh, these angles that are marked in purple are also alternate interior angles. Okay, we could have also labeled quite a few other corresponding angles in the first one. Um, I'll go ahead and do that. Um, these angles would be corresponding. These are corresponding. And these are corresponding. So I label them with the same numbers to show what they match up with. Okay, we also have alternate exterior. Okay, we also have alternate exterior angles, and that's what the angles in example three are. Again, alternate meaning they're on opposite sides of the transversal. Exterior means that they are on the outside of our parallels. So Y and X are alternate exterior. There is another pair of those as well. Um, these other two angles on the outside, on opposite sides of the parallel. <clears throat> Number four is another example of more corresponding angles. Okay. Same side interior, okay, same side interior. That would be example five. They're on the same side of the transversal, and they are, of course, inside the parallel. So Y and X are same side interior. Um, the other angles there are the other pair of same side interior. And then number six, another example of corresponding angles. Okay, another term that we need to be familiar with are vertical and adjacent angles. Okay, vertical means that <clears throat> they are across from each other uh, when two lines intersect. So number seven is an example of vertical angles and number 10 is an example of vertical angles. Eight and nine are adjacent. Uh, you may also call 8 and 9 uh, a linear pair. Okay, that's another term that can be used there. Uh, they are a linear pair because together they make up a straight line. Now, adjacent angles don't have to be a linear pair, but in this case they are um, because of the way they're formed. You can have two angles that are just beside each other that aren't necessarily a linear pair but these are. Okay. So, um, I want you to practice here with 11 through 16. You need to identify uh, those angles marked X and Y as either corresponding, alternate interior, alternate exterior, same side interior, vertical, or adjacent. So, corresponding angles are 
does anybody know what the relationship is, not just visually, but between their measure? They're the same measure, okay? They are congruent or they have the same measure. However you want to phrase that on your, on your paper there. Alternate interior angles. What do you know about those? They are also congruent. Alternate interior are also congruent. Let me explain that one for a second for the more visual amongst us. If we're talking about alternate interior, okay, using my whole slide one of the parallels idea, okay, if we take, and let me see if I can do this effectively. Oh, I bunched it all together. Um, my lines here. We've got parallel lines and a transversal. Okay, and we have alternate interior angles. If I take this parallel right here with its angle and I slide it, oops, I'm going to get there eventually. Okay. And if I slide it along the transversal, where does it end up? Okay, it ends up right there, and it's a vertical angle. I think y'all already know that vertical angles are congruent, right? So that's why same side, or not same side, alternate interior angles are congruent. Okay, that's why that is true. Alternate exterior angles. What do you think is going to happen there? They're also congruent, okay, for the same reason. I could do the same illustration right there, alternate exterior, and I could grab this one down here and slide it, maybe, slide it, I need the angle, this is not working. Okay. Slide it along the transversal, set it on top of the other parallel line. We've got vertical angles again, and vertical angles are congruent. Okay, so that's why alternate exterior are congruent. Same side interior or exterior, either one. Same side, what do you think is the relationship there? You get 180 degrees. We call that supplementary. Okay, they are supplementary or they add to 180. Okay, one more time, let's try this one more time, show you the reason why. Okay, if I slide this along the transversal, set it down on the other parallel, what do they form? They form uh, adjacent angles, or more specifically here, a linear pair. So that's why they add to 180 degrees. Okay, that's also true. I don't have it on here, but that's also true if they are exterior. Okay, same side, interior and exterior. Those are supplementary. Okay, vertical angles, I just mentioned it a second ago. They are congruent or equal to each other. Adjacent angles. Typically, when we're talking about parallel lines, uh, adjacent angles are supplementary. Um, sometimes they are not, uh, but most of the time when they're involved with parallel lines, they're supplementary. Put my little disclaimer over here, most of the time. Okay, so let's use these properties here. Um, and figure out some, some measures. Now, y'all could do it if I just had, had one of these labeled with 60 degrees and one of them labeled uh, as X. Obviously, you could tell me what it was. Let's make it a little bit more difficult, right? Y'all are up for the challenge. So I'm going to say good morning. Okay. Um, so, why don't we just throw in three sets of parallel lines while we're at it, too? Okay. But the key here is to focus in on which parallel and, and the transversal, what's involved here. Okay, so this would be our transversal because our three parallel lines are uh, moving left to right here. Uh, the angles here are this angle right here, 
x plus 63 is representing this angle. Sometimes that can be a little difficult to determine. And x plus 133 is this angle. So what are those angles right there? They are adjacent or they are a linear pair. So when we add them together, x plus 63 plus x plus 133, what are we setting that equal to? 180. Oh, this is number... 38, apparently, on your paper. Okay. So, uh, let's solve that. Okay, x plus x gives us 2x. 63 plus thir uh, 133 is 196. Thank you. So, we need to move the 196 to the other side. 2x is equal to negative 16. Divide by 2, x is negative 8. And I think that's what we're asking for. What is x, right? Sometimes you got to read the directions carefully. Find the measure of the angle indicated in bold. Oh, okay. Uh, the 133 is bold. So um, x is not enough, okay? We also, we got to plug it back in. All right, we got to plug it back in. So, um, x plus 133 was the one in bold, so negative 8 plus 133, that means our angle is 125 degrees. That's the angle we're looking for. Now, just for kicks, let's see how many more angles we can label in this diagram on number 38 right here. Okay, what else can we label? Um, of course, we have this vertical angle right here that's the same measure. The x plus 63 would be 55 degrees, right? And then that means this is also 55 degrees. Yes. Okay, so keep going. Okay, keep going. Let's go up to the next parallel. What can we label? We can label the corresponding angles to the ones we labeled in that first batch. And we can even extend it to some, not all, but some of these angles on the top. Okay, that's really all we can label because we don't know at what angle that other transversal there cuts that. Um, so we can't really do anything more. Okay, there is no more labeling to be done. Um, now, I do know that it looks like, if you look at this, it looks like this is pretty close to an isosceles trapezoid, meaning these two sides have the same length, so then these, the angles at the top and the angles at the bottom are the same, but you cannot assume that, okay, you cannot assume that. So that is, that is all you can label on that diagram right there. Okay, let's look at number 33. Let's look at number 33 as another example. Let's see, we're going to start by solving for x, and then we'll see what else we can label in our diagram here. Okay, um, so what kind of angles are these? Mm, they are on the same side, but they're not both interior, they're not both exterior, so they are corresponding. They're corresponding. Corresponding angles are congruent, so let's set these equal to each other and solve for x. So I'm going to subtract the 17x from both sides. So that says 7 is equal to x plus 3. So subtract 3. x is equal to 4. So that means that 18x plus 3 is 75, which means 17x plus 7 is also 75. Hmm? Yes.